In this video, I want to break down why it's so important to know your rosacea type. This is going to be crucial to make sure that you end up on the right treatment for your rosacea. I'm Dr. John Barbieri. I'm a board certified dermatologist and rosacea expert. Now, when I say know your rosacea type, I'm not talking about these old categories people used to use like erythromatolangiectatic rosacea or papulopustular rosacea. These are really oversimplifications because many people have features that might be in both of these at the same time. The categories I'm talking about really fall into three big buckets, which within them have some smaller buckets. The big buckets I will call redness, bumps, and then these changes to the nose called phyma. And then within these buckets, particularly the redness one, there's a few subcategories. There's persistent erythema, that's redness that's kind of always there, just that kind of ruddiness in the cheeks. There are telangiectasias. These are these broken little blood vessels. They look like little tiny rivers of redness that we can see on our face. And then there's transient erythema or flushing. When it comes to bumps, there's papules. These can look a little bit like acne pimples and then pustules, little white pus bumps. These often happen on the cheeks or sometimes other areas of the face. And an important thing about rosacea is that we don't see whiteheads and blackheads. That's a thing that separates bumps and rosacea from bumps and acne. And then finally, that last category is phyma, these changes to the nose, where people can have thickening of the skin on the nose or their nose grows in size. And now why is it so important to know which rosacea type you are? Well, understanding your rosacea type allows you to pick which treatments are gonna be most effective. Now, many people have several of these things at once. You don't have to be in just one category. You can have transient erythema, where you have flushing, and you can have papules and pustules. You could have phyminous changes to the nose, and you could also have background fixed erythema. So these things can go together in any sort of combination, and that's what's so powerful about this framework, is if you understand what kinds of rosacea types you have, you can pick the treatments that are gonna be most effective for that type. So let me start to break that down a little bit more. Let's start with redness. So as I mentioned in redness, there are really three main kinds of redness. There's transient erythema flushing, there's more fixed persistent erythema, that's that background kind of just redness that's always there, and then there are telangiectasias, these little broken blood vessels on the skin. When it comes to flushing, there are really only two treatments right now that are available and effective for this. The first are alpha adrenergics, these are creams that cause those blood vessels on the skin to constrict, and this can help reduce that excessive blood flow that we see that's causing flushing. However, for many people with flushing, these aren't a strong enough treatment, and they need to consider other treatment options, the main one being beta blockers. These are pill medications that help to, again, regulate those blood vessels in the skin to prevent flushing, and they can be very helpful, though they can cause some important side effects because they can make it a little bit harder to tolerate exercise, and they can potentially make people have lower blood pressure. So for people who have issues with blood pressure or really active, sometimes these medications can be challenging to take on a daily basis. There's another group of medications called CGRP inhibitors. These affect something called calcitonin gene-related protein. And this is potentially important in, again, that vascular reactivity in the skin, and it may be a helpful treatment for flushing. Right now, it's not currently FDA approved for flushing, and there are trials underway to understand this further, but it is available for migraine. And many people with rosacea also have migraine. So for those who have migraine and rosacea, with flushing, this might be a good treatment to pick for the migraine side of things. It might help with the flushing too. Now moving on from flushing to that more fixed erythema, that background redness that's there all the time, here's where again those topical alpha adrenergic medicines like oxymetazoline or bromonidine can be helpful because they're going to tell those blood vessels in the skin to calm down. That reduced blood flow is going to reduce that background redness. In addition, laser treatments like intense pulse light, or pulse dye laser, or KTP laser can also be helpful at reducing that background redness. And then finally, for telangiectasias, these broken blood vessels on the skin, these tend to work best with some sort of physical treatment, whether it's electrodesiccation where we use an electric needle to get rid of those broken blood vessels on the skin, or a laser treatment like pulse dye laser or intense pulse light. These tend to be the most effective ways to address telangiectasias. Now, moving on to papules and pustules, Here's where we want to think about some of our antimicrobial treatments. These are things that address our microbiome that can play an important role in rosacea. Things like metronidazole, 
ivermectin, azelaic acid. These can be really helpful topical treatments when it comes to papules and pustules. They can help a little bit with redness too, but their most helpful use is for those papules and pustules. And then for more severe papules and pustules, that's where we can think about some of our oral medications like antibiotics, like doxycycline, or sometimes even isotretinone accutane for really severe inflammatory rosacea. And then moving on to the final category, thymidus rosacea, those changes to the nose. If they're actively having changes, so if someone's having growth in their nose, if they're having redness or other symptoms that are ongoing, that's where things like oral antibiotics that have anti-inflammatory properties like doxycycline or often isotretinone accutane are the best treatment to do to really try and prevent what can sometimes become permanent changes to the nose. For those who do though have those more permanent changes from years of activity, that's where sometimes surgical modalities and there's a number of different procedures that we can do to help with that can address that issue. Now across all rosacea types, it's important to think about just general skincare things. So that's sun protection because UV is going to lead to that issues in the skin, that vascular reactivity, those other drivers of rosacea. So for everybody with rosacea, sun protection is really important, whether that's avoiding the midday sun, using hats or other sun protective clothing or a sunscreen, it doesn't really matter. The key thing is just protecting the skin from the sun because that is a key driver of rosacea. In addition, we want to think about are there any triggers? Some people, especially those who have a lot of flushing or redness, notice that certain foods or activities can be triggers for the rosacea. Now, avoiding these is often easier said than done, but if there are clear triggers that aren't that hard to avoid, or especially if you want to have a day where you're not having those symptoms, noticing your triggers for your rosacea and avoiding them can often be a helpful strategy for many of the patients that I see, especially for those who have a lot of redness or flushing. So that's again why it's so critical to understand your rosacea type, to know, do you have fixed erythema where you have that background redness, transient erythema, flushing, telangiectasias, papules or pustules or phyma, because knowing what combination of rosacea types you have allows us to think about what are gonna be the most effective treatments for rosacea. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you have, please give it a like so that we can share it with more in the community and consider subscribing to our channel. I really appreciate your support and it's what allows me to keep making videos like this. In addition, ask me your questions about rosacea in the comments below and I look forward to seeing you in future videos. See ya.